Hey, welcome back to the SBP podcast, Mobile Filmmaking. I'm your host, Susie Botello, and you are listening to episode 159. Usually I like to present you and introduce you to our guest in this introduction. Uh, But for our guest for this evening, could be the morning for you, I'm going to wait and introduce you as soon as I head on over and talk to my guest. His name, though, I will tell you, his name is Arthur McKiv, and he's been here before in episode 101. If you want to go back to that, meanwhile, Back in the Bat Cave, <laughs> our uh, feature film competition for the film festival next April in 2024. I want to give you a heads up. The regular deadline for that is coming up on October 19th. So be aware of that and uh, get your films in. Hey, by the way, uh, before we get started, have you signed up for our newsletter yet? Um, Sign up for the newsletter. Look, it's not, um, we're not spamming. We're not adding anyone unless you subscribe. So if you haven't subscribed, even if we have your email address already, We're not adding you. We have a lot of respect for you. (laughs) So, and your privacy. So sign up for the newsletter. There's no spamming. We don't share email addresses. It's just for us. And to stay in touch with you, give you some updates. If, If something ever comes up, we can always shoot out an email to you. And, um, and there may be some other perks involved in that and some new updates aside from receiving an email when a new episode comes out. It's just one more thing that I've added to my agenda when I publish each episode now is to, um, you know, send out a a newsletter to all of you wonderful, beautiful people, uh, listeners. So anyways, uh, let's get right to our show and let's go talk to Arthur. Arthur McCabe is right here sitting next to me across the world. <laughs> Hi, Arthur. <laughs> How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you to having me. And yeah, I'm an Arthur McCabe. I was in, the, in, in this podcast, um, I think, two years ago or something like this. And I'm happy to be here again with you. Yes, I'm, I'm glad to finally have you back. You've been doing a, a lot of wonderful things. Arthur, you won an award at our film festival. Let's not forget and show off a little bit here. You won an award in our film festival in 2021. Uh, what was the name of the film again? I'm so sorry. Name of film? Uh, uh, War, War is, is Not, not a, game. a Game. That's right. Yeah. I just remembered it after I asked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was a short film. And it won first place in 2021. But we hope that at some point you'll make it back here to San Diego uh, for another film festival. And one of the reasons why I say that is because, Arthur, you've been teaching um, even before uh, you won that award. uh, You've been teaching mobile filmmaking, right? Why don't you share a little bit about what you teach? Well, I ha- I, it's five years that I start to teaching people how to film using their phones. And five years ago, that was if you try to say to somebody hey, like, hey, I'm filming on a phone and I try to do some serious stuff. Everybody look, look at you like and think that you're insane. <laughs> like, whoa, that, that's the phone. This is not the real camera. Just buy a real camera. Come on. But... Today and even today, you can you, you, you can find people that thinks like that. But um, 
I, I, I have a mission <laughs> inside of myself. I wanted to, to teach people that it doesn't matter what camera you're using. It, it can be a big camera, big cinema camera. It, it can be a DSLR, um, whatever, phone, action cam. You can use anything you have and anything you want. And I open with, with my ex. I am now it's my ex, <laughs> yeah. but back then it was my girlfriend and we opened uh, oh. an online. <laughs> I thought you meant the school. iPhone X. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It, 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 I, I, I'm talking about the person. Right, right. <laughs> now I get it. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No problem. Um, and we opened uh, online school, uh, it, it, uh, pocket film, pocket yeah. film dot ru. And before that, I met Maxim Musso. You know him? Yes, He's a of good course. guy. You know, we, we, we spoke about him in our last uh, session. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, because he was the one who... Um, so he won. He's your competitor. <laughs> he, <laughs> he won in our film festival. Uh, I believe it was in 2014 as well, quite honest. He won with his film... Um, I forgot the name of the city, uh, Lisbon. He made a little mm, short film, maybe. a travel video from that, and he won in our little film festival back then. Yeah, and he's he inspired me a lot. I always say that I have three fathers. My real father, my biological father, my stepfather, and my, um, you know, art father, creative father. And this Your is mentor. Maxim. Mentor, yeah, exactly. And I met him. Um, and he just tell me a lot about the mobile filmmaking. And after some period of time, I start to do it on my own. I opened a school and I, w I, I think he was really scared uh, about all this because we are competitors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right because now. he was also <laughs> teaching and he wrote a book. Um, yeah. That I, I actually, I think there's a like a foreword or something like that from me. He sent it to me. He says if you can review it, and I'll add your your review or whatever uh, to the book itself as well. But it's all in Russian, so I have no idea what it says. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the name of book, as far as I remember, is uh, 100 Steps to Make Film with Your Phone. Yes. Something like this. Yes. Yeah, it's it's really simple book. Uh, actually, it's um, it's like a book for kids. Yeah. Um, just like very 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 simple introduction in the world of mobile filmmaking. Yeah. And uh, he, I, I always think that he um, continued to uh, he, write another. I did book. get a translated version, just so that you guys know that <laughs> when I'm reviewing mm. the book, I did get to read it in. But the published book is all in Russian. I just mm -hmm, wanted to clarify mm -hmm. that because it sounds like I tried to, you know, review a book that I didn't understand. So just so everybody knows. Well, thanks God we live in a world with AI. So yeah, it's I true think now, it, huh? It's, it's much easier today to just translate a book, video. You can translate a video real time in a browser today. And it's it, 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 with a voiceover, not I just, just subtitles. Did it. Just I just did it last night. Um, I did mm. it for one of the podcasts to transcribe it uh, through AI, and it just and the, the whole thing was done in less than ten minutes. Um, the only thing yeah. is, it was like a text file, so everything just looked like one big block of text. You know, so you can't tell who's speaking and who's not, and there's no time codes or anything like that. And I was like, wow, but that still you have the text. <laughs> that's pretty cool oh we have uh, I have a, a lot of problems with my students because um, maybe you don't know but people in Russia I don't know why but people in in Russia have really big problems with English um, and a lot of people especially the young people can speak English and, or they speak very 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 poorly mm -hmm. and uh, I always give my students some additional materials like articles in, in, in the internet, videos from um, you know, some YouTube channels. And I always th say them, like, 
watch there is a good stuff about lighting about the camera setup and all that and they always suffer because it's oh it's a, it's an english do you have a russian video something like this but today you can use the ai and we have a browser here we, we have a company yandex um maybe you heard about it yeah and it, it's it's russian google <laughs> yeah like it, it's used for uh, file transfers and things like that also it's it's like a hub for yeah. food delivery for a taxi it's a browser it's everything uh, and uh you you can download the yandex browser and there is a internal ai that you just open a youtube video on english for example just push the button wait for a uh, five or four minutes and you got a voice over just oh. a russian voice over yeah so um i think the technology uh, is, is awesome today and i believe one day i i can sit here and speak russian yep and some robotic voice english robotic voice right. will be <laughs> translate me in Actually, real time no they sound really they sound pretty good um yeah yeah there was some i was i was just looking into a lot of those things last night for some reason i was curious friday night um mm. <laughs> and uh <laughs> i was i was looking through all those and i was looking for the for the ones that would do the transcripts but i was finding all the other ones too and there was one of them that said that well a few of them that's that's the cool and that's the scary at the same time the rise of machines is ahead of us <laughs> yeah well i mean so yeah there, it's like it's like two sides of the coin right yeah. the yin and the yang you know it exactly. depends on how people are using it unfortunately there are people out there who are yeah it's um there's, there's the whole AI thing is scary, Arthur, because we can bleed out the humanity to where we we don't matter in everyday things like art, right? And and but what does matter is, you know, AI generated stuff. So we have to be careful. Yeah, and that's uh, I I started to to write my fifth book i wrote a four before book books and you can find it on amazon but unfortunately it's on russian i i wanted to make a translations for a long time but i, I don't know maybe i'm lazy or i've always forgot about <laughs> it but i, I it, it's still on russian I'm, yeah. I'm sorry for that but i started to write my new book and the main topic of my my book and my thoughts is uh ai and uh, human being creator like uh, what's the difference between the AI generated image for example or video or music and you know something that human created and is there a reason and w w what we can do um, with it I have my own thoughts and I think my I I, um, I think personally it's it's my it's my opinion yeah that um, you know, art, it's something that uh, make you feel something. When you look at the picture in a museum, for example, and you can feel, you know, anger, sadness, happiness, something. And this is art. And if you, if, if, when you listen to music, when you listen to a song, you can feel the same thing, like sadness, happiness, and all that. And but how you know maybe this image was generated with ai is this art or it's not art and that there is a question that i try to you know find an answer you I know the philosophers way back uh in in the beginning of civilization were asking the same questions about art you know what is art and what it what does it mean and all those things um my my thing you know i'm very close to the story part and the story um the storytelling uh to me is a very important thing because it, that's how we connect as human beings it's not um well it is the the one thing that humans have that other animals don't have right and it, and, and stories are part of art and they generate art uh, through storytelling and through expression, which is also art. 
emotions, mm -hmm. all those things. It's a progress and it's it's interesting, but it's scary at the same time. When you, you know, uh, w when I found some case of using the AI and like, um, do you know a band Oasis? O Oasis? Oasis. Oh, yes. Liam, yes. Liam Gallagher. And yeah, and some guys, just random guys, they um, make some instrumental tracks and they imitate the Gallagher's voice wow. uh, with the AI and they create an album. It's eight tracks in that album that was generated by AI. And Gallagher, Gallagher tweeted <laughs> like, wow, I, I, I sound awesome. <laughs> but it, it, was, it, it was not him. It was just AI. And I, it, you can find it. You can find it on YouTube, and it's really good album. <laughs> it's really wow. good album. But see, and that's where the whole question becomes, you know, like your voice right now, my voice, right? I make, you know, I have a podcast with my voice, and I bring people like you in it. So now you're a part of this show, and mm. that is content that is copyrighted to me. So for somebody else to take that and use it for other things, they would be infringing on my property rights along with yours. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that becomes scary. And for a singer and musician, uh, that's even scarier because it's like, and I don't mean scary like woohoo guys. I mean, it's almost Halloween, Arthur. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I mean, you know, it, 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 it devalues the human and it raises the ability to just, you know, very cheaply, right, mm -hmm. uh, present you in this. It's like your shadow. Your shadow doesn't have the definition of who you really are. It doesn't have your personality. It doesn't have your charisma. It doesn't have all of those things. But your shadow is now more important than the real you. You know, the the one that's mm -hmm. casting that shadow, the original. Speaking of, uh, just going to share that the music that you heard in the intro was by Arthur McCabe. Uh, you're also a musician. And we're going to share yeah, links it, it, to that, too. Thank, it was not generated by AI. No. It was generated <laughs> by, by, by me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you to share uh, my music. I have to apologize. My music is, it's, um, eh, don't it, apologize. Just, nah. Don't apologize <laughs> okay. for your music. It's art. Never apologize okay. for your art. It's very, I, it's I, all I subjective and I love it. Uh, yeah. Art is very subjective, uh, subjective. Uh, I always try to, you know, tell that to my students. They don't realize that many of them don't realize that we speaking about, uh, my film school. And suddenly we try to we start to speak about AI and yeah. art. But um, but that's okay because the one thing about film school, right, is yeah. that you're teaching humans how to create things. You're not teaching your students are not AI. Yeah, I hope I hope they're not. <laughs> I hope they're they're humans. Um, so yeah, and uh, some of my students start to asking me about AI stuff because it's uh, all around us today. It's very popular, uh, chat GPT, mid journey and things like that. Bing from Microsoft. Uh, I, 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 um, I have an idea. I make my new book and I wanted to generate my book cover with the AI and I use Bing and mid journey but I'm still not happy with the result, but I'm trying. I, I, I wanted to create something good and trick my readers. I mm, don't want to tell them that this is, was generated by AI. Uh, it's like the guy from Colorado, as far as I remember, he um, took place in some competition, picture competition, and he won with a picture uh, mm. A picture was generated by AI. A picture was amazing. And there is a lot of anger that he got from other competitors and, you know, people from the Internet. It's like this. This is the cheating. This is no, this is not good. You use the computer, use 
AI, you don't you don't make it by yourself, like with your hands and with the uh, brushes and and paint. Yeah, I have. I mean, there's a there's a fine line on that uh, for the film festival for the for this year's competition. I before we you know we put that out, put that out. I made sure that it's on the criteria that no AI generated films or you know uh, we also have a screenplay competition and we don't want AI stuff there because we do want people to create their own things because we have to be careful because it's a competition with people but they're going to be competing with each other using their smartphones right their smartphone cameras mm -hmm. but way back even when you when you um, submitted your film they were part of the rules was not to use editing software where it makes the editing decisions for you, where you make all the decisions on the editing mm. because there were editing, you know, and this is from way back in the beginning, the very, from the very first film festival, it was part of the rules. And that's why I don't like, uh, you know, editing software that decides um, mm -hmm. for you w w w what to do like out of auto editing programs um, I don't remember exact names of these applications but it doesn't matter well yeah I agree but you know it's it's um, there's a one aspect um, where is that line when what we we using our modern phone it, it's not that old-fashioned phones it's uh, very complicated devices with a lot of you know AI stuff inside in camera, for example. So when you shoot with your phone, yeah, yeah, automation. Um, and phone try to help you with with your you know project. Just do image a little better, yeah. better this, better that. And where is that border? Where is that line that you can't cross when we speak about the using AI instrument in our create in our create creativity. Well, I work on graphics, right? And there's there's always more and new features in editing software uh, for creating, making it easier the the flow of the of making your art, right? And the graphics and things like that, and manipulating. But you're you're controlling and manipulating it yourself. I think the difference is when you have the computer itself and the progress, the the software where you say give me a picture of this and it does everything for you you don't control the manipulation or anything like that where you're just saying give me a car that's red placed on top of a hill mm. with an mm -hmm. open door and flowers yeah. around it giving it the details but you're not actually manipulating them and controlling exactly the shadows the textures all those things you're not inputting that from your own imagination that's i think where yeah. the difference is there is a new profession by the way the prompt engineer do you hear about uh -huh. this something, yep. something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so there's the guys who um create um text for ai like i want a birds with a red background or right. something like this yeah yeah that's like when i worked in graphics the 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 manager comes in and says, the CEO wants this, and now I'm telling you more details, and then you make it. And then I make it exactly how they want it, and I show it to them, and they say, the CEO doesn't like it. Even though I loved it, the CEO now doesn't like it. He's changed his mind. Now he wants everything in yellow with blue skies and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Which oh, that's a typical typical CEO. Very, very, very typical. You know, make up your mind. Um, but uh, the problem with that is, it's all the issues are in a profession, right? The artist has already always had a tough time getting paid to do the work because the executives think they're just having fun with art. They, they think of, you know, children doing art. Why should you pay mm -hmm. somebody to do art? They don't mm -hmm. deserve that respect. It's not like you're an accountant, you know, adding and dividing and multiplying, you know, money. <laughs> and so they don't want to pay you. 
the reality is that a lot of executives and companies want to make profit so they're not going to pay you if they can get out get away with not and that's a great excuse to say well art is just it's fun stuff it's not the same and that's the problem i think you know arthur now we have a video editor or a graphics designer we don't have to pay them anymore because now we got you know joey and timmy and lisa and they're all sitting around and they're just talking into the software and telling them what i'm telling them that i want and if i change my mind they just tell them and they don't have to worry about paying somebody for creating something more than once yeah i think that ai today it's some kind of instrument it's it's not like brush in your hand of course right. but it's still some some kind of instrument but what happen if someday i believe someday we can create a, a robot like you know human like, like looks like human yes. and the robot and the robot says i am i am a person i'm living remember, i'm here and remember the film with will smith did you ever see that it's called i robot yeah 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 that's exactly what is already starting to happen i, I want to shift now a little bit to uh something else you um i just i just saw you put something online a beautiful video that you shot with the new um uh the new camera app that came out from um black magic yeah black magic camera app uh, what are your feelings about that? How did you like it? Because it came out beautiful. So, thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, um, I, um, you know, all people, the, the most popular app, uh, app, it's uh, Filmic Pro, and I personally don't like Filmic Pro. I I don't know why. I just don't like the design. I don't like their um, subscription subscriptions and all that. I just don't like it. But everybody use it, and it's very popular. Uh, I tr always try to find something else um, on an App Store or in the Google Play Market. It's very hard to find some great stuff in the Google Play Market. It's oh, a really yeah. big, big problem on on Android. So that's why I'm using the iPhone. Um, it's not because it's a be best camera. It's because you can find a lot of great apps in the App Store. And um, I used the application with name uh, Beast Cam for a very long period of time. It's not free, but it's good. It has yeah, I um, bought that one too. It's a good um, two dollars you know, or something uh, like that. Oh, well, it's very cheap, and even 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 if it's, it costs two dollars, a lot of my students like oh, it's you have to pay for it. It's just like two dollars, like a <laughs> coffee cup. Come on. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not a cat. You know, it, it, it's nothing too special. It's cheaper about than it. coffee. Yeah, it's, it's I think really what cheaper happens than too coffee. is like people want to try things out and they don't want to have to pay for anything. You know. Um, yeah. I get it, but at the same time, you know, if you think about, uh, you know, Black Magic Design, the the company, we were talking earlier about Da Vinci Resolve, the uh, the editor. That is a top-notch editor for uh, for movies and feature films and all sorts of video projects. It does color grading. It does really great stuff for audio, and it's free. I mean, if you want yeah. extra other stuff, it's not free, but it's free. And I think most of the money that they're making is through the Blackmagic camera itself, right? And then those plugins. So I just wanted to let everybody know the Blackmagic camera that is probably one of the most popular cameras other than the red for indie filmmaking those are the guys that made this camera app that you used arthur yeah and it's uh, i love black magic cameras it's not that uh expensive like red or airy and it can give you a very good raw picture it, it, it have a lot of problems of course but any any camera have a problems. I love Blackmagic cameras. I love DaVinci. I like uh, it's it's really good policy. Uh, I mean company policy. They let you use their stuff 
for free sometimes, like DaVinci Resolve or the Black Magic, uh, yeah, yeah, Black Magic Camera application, yeah. Um, and a lot of people can't believe that. I, when I posted this video uh, on my Instagram, a lot of people it's like, oh, I can't believe it's free. It's something, something strange about it. No, it's free. Like DaVinci Resolve, <laughs> you can download it for free officially from the website. Yeah, <laughs> and it and it works good. Um, and it doesn't have like their logo in the background, like a watermark yeah, and things like that, which people expect, nothing. right? Yeah, nothing. It's just you, you can just use it. But um, and the Blackmagic um, camera app, I try to do something with it. And of course, it's not perfect, but nothing perfect in this world. Right. But but I think it's very, very, very good. Um, there is pros and cons. I don't like the stabilization. I prefer the Beast Camera app instead. It have a very good stabilization, um, you know. But but other things is very 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 good. It's totally okay, and it's not glitching. Um, I love. It's uh, only guys from thirty-seven megabytes. The entire app is 30, thirty-seven 30. megabytes. Oh, it's it's very small application. That's probably why it, there's not so many glitches or anything like that. You know, I love Moment. I love what they're doing, like lenses, um, uh, like their videos. It's very educational and it's very useful. And I use their uh, application, Moment Pro Camera. But it's some glitches that still there. It's five or four years it's still there they can't fix that and i don't know why they can't it's it's when you try when you open this application and you try to change for for example iso or shutter speed yeah there's suddenly you change the white balance but you you really don't change white balance you try to change the iso and you have to close the application and open it again oh. and then it works fine and it's really make me sick and i don't know why they can fix it. I love their their products uh, anyways, but they have to fix that. You know, we were talking about Filmic Pro earlier. And mm -hmm. the, when they first came out, because it came out after the film festival, right? So people started mm -hmm. using it and I got it. And it was free at the time, you know, when it first came out. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> the first thing, I mean, it basically, it allowed you to lock focus and exposure um, I can't remember it doing anything else, really. I think it had audio meters on it or something like that, but that's about it. And then Apple, um, I remember, I think I was on the 4S or something in 2013 or something like that. And Apple said on the new iOS, not even having to get a new camera, oh, you can lock exposure and focus now on the native app. <laughs> and I was like, oh, so... What's Filmic Pro got to do now? They, so now they have to add <laughs> new features, you know, to, you know, you did color grading on your film, which makes it look very cinematic. And Thank you're very you. good at that. But if you capture I, it on, on log, you can even do better. Yeah. Yeah. I have problems with the color grading, uh, but everybody tell me that, no, no, you, your, your colors is very good. But I sometimes I, I, I can work on some project for about a three or four hours and I just close my laptop and go to sleep and open it up on the next day and see uh, with a fresh eye on what, what I'm what I'm done. Yeah. Just like yesterday it's like, wow, is this horrible? It's so greenish or yellowish or something like this. <laughs> I have to fix that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and with log capture, everything comes out flat. So you get yeah. to control every it's and manipulate easier. everything so you you would probably enjoy that a lot more i re uh, speaking about a filmic pro the last thing i want to say about it it's uh, i remember when the uh, when iphone 11 comes comes out on a market uh it was a apple keynote and the guy from a filmic pro came on stage and he presented the um, uh, the, the collaboration with Apple, Apple, like, well, now we are collaborate with Apple and all that. But the problem was when the iPhone 11 go to the stores, yeah. people can buy it. It, it, have, it has three cameras and the Filmic Pro app doesn't support all these three cameras. The, uh, it's, they, they fixed that um, a month 
after release in a phone. But the moment, speaking of moment, they um, creating an update for their application on the next day, as far as I remember. So wow. I I don't understand that you have a collaboration with Apple. So why you don't make an update? You know, in in the day that phone release. Yeah. But that's the strange. That's the thing. The, strange. the thing that I respect a lot about. I have a thing for pioneers, and even though the um, the i the you know, like I said, my the film festival, this whole push that I gave to people to make movies for the big screen, ultimately feature films, Hollywood films shot with smartphones, right? And mm -hmm. my push for that was laughed at by even my own friends who made films and videos and things like that, right? I mean, it was completely, they were mad. They were insulted. <laughs> and then the, the iPhone 4 with the HD comes out, and then all of a sudden... All these, all these uh, apps and, and, and everything came out going, oh, it's now convenient for us. You know, it's now a thing to, to get on that. And Filmic Pro designed an app with that same mentality, I think, that I had as well, that said, well, this is going to go to where it is today, you know? Mm. And so they pushed for that. And it was really just just like three or four people who got together and made it possible. And I think that without Filmic Pro diving in and providing their app to be able to do just some very few simple things that the, the cameras on the phones couldn't do, it helped to move this push for making movies on the phone as a cinematic um, revolution in a way, right? It helped mm -hmm. to push that forward in a way that would have taken longer, you know, yeah. had they not do done that. So I do have a lot of respect. I just want my listeners to understand that um, not everybody's perfect and that people do mm -hmm. have limitations and things like that. And there are, there is a lot of competition between these apps, you know, and, and companies, you know, uh, I, for example, am not very happy with gimbals. A lot of my students think that uh, gimbal, it's like a magic, magic wand. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You just, you, you, you just buy it in stores, start using it and everything will be cinematic and smooth. But, it's not, but no, you, you have to learn how to use it. Uh, you have to work correctly, like Ninja Walk style. You have to move correctly. And after, the, after that, it's, it's not a magic wand. Uh, it's not perfect. It's not perfect at all. So yeah, I, I, I use two. I use uh, one for my uh, big camera. No, it, it's not a big, it's just my regular camera, like Fujifilm X-T4. XT, uh, it's the Zhiyun Crane 2. And for my phone, I use uh, my very, very um, I, I love that, that stuff. It's, uh, there is a company, Freefly, and they create oh, Freefly yeah. Mo Movie. So there's the company DJI, you all yeah, know about this company. Yeah, they would sell them at the, at the Apple store. It, yeah, and they created some time ago, they created the device um, DJI Osmo X3 and X5. So that's the camera on a gimbal. You can detach this camera of the gimbal. You can you, you have to use it just uh, like that. And uh, one day they th uh, think like, uh, phones today is very good to capture footage. So why we can just use a phone as a camera? And they created DJI Osmo Mobile version one. And uh, back then it was very, you know, very um, creative idea. Uh, and I think that they was first on the market. Um, but Freefly, yeah, yeah, they they don't, you know, manufacture that uh, gimbal today. Yeah, I think I don't, so. A, a lot of them have gone. You know, the, the gimbal market is going down, too, because of the stabilization on the phones being so good. And also the cages are now becoming mm -hmm, popular. Mm -hmm. But then the, you know, like I'm I, I'm just it's kind of like in, in, in my vision. Right. It's kind of 
going to be, and I think Apple is thinking the same thing, right? Ultimately, that less is more. The less things that you have to, because it's mobile, right? So the simplicity Mm -hmm. of being able to film without all the gear and all the complexities in an app, like manipulating frame rates and things like that, it's like, why not just say, I want to make a film for a 60 foot screen and then just push a button and all those things come together and make that the best decision for you on that. So you can just focus on being creative, focus on Mm -hmm. making a great story into a film, right? Don't have to worry too much about gimbals and tripods and all those things. Just focus on the other things and let the phone do as much of that as possible. I think that's where, if I was Apple, that would be my goal to make everything just be on the phone. Someone just pulls it out of their pocket. I'm making a movie today. You know, I'm starting this movie. I'm shooting the scene today. And I don't need to bring a lot of stuff. Yeah, I agree. I think that, well, when we speak about the, to create some, you know, about movies, about all that, um, you know, songs, movies, picture in a frame, comic book, uh, video game, it's, um, you know, it's a story, yes. Mm -hmm. Just like mm, you have lyrics and song, you have uh, some, you know, uh, story in a a picture on a wall, Um, you have a story on narrative on the video game and in a movie. So it's all about the stories. You have to know how to tell a good story. It, when people, when, when, people sitting around the fireplace many, 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 many years ago, what are they doing? They tell stories, stories to each other. Yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, a lot of my students and a lot of people that surrounds me in my, in, in, in this video creation industry, they try to argue with me and prove me, try to prove me that, um, that technology is more important than, uh, than, than your personality, than your creativity. You have to buy a best camera, you have to buy a best gimbal, best lenses. But no, we talked about this earlier, about the AI. Um, AI, it's a computer, but the most important part of it, it's you. It's the person who create all this. It's your emotion, it's your you know, creativity, it's your feelings that you put in your story. Yeah, our connection to... When, uh, you know, I actually have spoken about this before um, and written about it before as well. The reason why humans, you know, like when I studied, um, you know, um, anthropology, which is the study of humanity, really. The reason we speak that we have language is our need for expression. The need for expression is not our expression as an emotion. It's an expression of being able to share stories with one another, which is why we were drawing things on cave walls that led us to speaking and learning languages so that we could connect and share stories with each other. That's Mm -hmm. the origin of humanity. And that is the thing about the human brain that doesn't exist in other animals. That's what makes us unique. And there's a need for that. I think wolves can't, you know, tell the stories to each other. So uh, you have to learn how to create story, And that's the thing that you have to focus on, um, the story and the way you, you, you tell into that, that story to your audience, not the gear you're using. So, yeah, uh, and the phones today are very, very good. I think it's, it's enough good to, to create any kind of story. Um, but, you know, when Apple uh, creates some kind of promotion videos for their new phones, they always uh, collaborate with the uh, different famous directors and yeah, cameramen. Yeah, I wish I get mad sometimes a little bit because it's like, hey, why don't you reach out to the, to the hundreds of thousands of wonderful filmmakers that are not in Hollywood or famous? And that would be more inspiring. You know what I'm saying? 
to have someone yeah. who is not famous make because otherwise it's like, well, yeah, that's a famous director. Of course they can make that with an iPhone. But imagine saying, yeah. hey, Arthur, you show them and they're like, oh, it's just Arthur. And he made this wonderful thing with an iPhone. And by the way, you guys, you got to see. <laughs> <You gotta, laughs> we're, we're adding all these links for you to see what Arthur can create. And Arthur is is just, he's a great guy. He's not a Hollywood, you know, rich guy making movies in Hollywood or anything like that. And Apple, I'm Sherry, if you're listening, <laughs> reach out to Arthur. Uh, uh, yeah, they, they, they uh, you know, when they see uh, like Snow Steam Iron by Zack Snyder, they think, oh, that's the Zack Snyder. Of course he can do this. I can't. But Zack Snyder is not from different planet. He's just human with two hands, two legs, and, and a head, and two eyes. He's just like you. And if he can do this, you can do this. This is not nothing to his... Uh, a lot of people think that, oh, they use a lot of, you know, stuff like lighting, gimbals, tripods, they're using, um, I think, things like that. I think also, Arthur, they're looking at Zack Snyder today. They're not looking at Zack Snyder, the little kid who started thinking this way. And as he grew older, started to experience this because the more, you know, experience makes the expert. I That's my quote that I'm always saying. You have to start somewhere and you have to keep at it and you have to grow to become that expert by doing it. And I think that's what happens. You know, people look at Zack Snyder or Steven Spielberg and they're thinking about these people as today. Of course, they can do it. But you need to look at in the past, they started out as a little ball of flesh, you know, with diapers, just like you did. <laughs> ah, oh, <laughs> yes. I, I, that's the hard sometimes to switch from one language to another. And see, I, <laughs> I just say that it's yes. Uh, yeah, we all started with something. And, you know, if you, if you want to learn to swim, you, you, you can read a books about swimming, but if you want to learn to swim, you have to swim. You have to go to the you know, ocean, pole, and swim. And Zack, Zack Snyder, Quentin Tarantino, and all these great directors that we know, they started from some point, and they was kids, and they was um, not professionals, but they, you know, practicing, 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 and they love what they do. That's the, uh, another very very important aspect of this process you have to passion. love it and passion yeah I, I i try to tell that my students that all the time if you came here i want you to love this if you don't like what you do and maybe you do is maybe you create want to create videos just because it's popular and just because you think that you can make money with it no, there is no success success ahead of you. You have to just love it. Forget about anything else like money and all that. Just love and do. And one day, it's it's gotta be it's gotta be cool. Yeah, I and the the, the funny thing about you know that part, the money part, is I think a lot of people with all the Hollywood strikes that are happening now and everything are starting to learn the fact that you know you don't make money really. And in this business, only a few people, a handful of people get to make all the money for everybody else that's doing it. So you you just have to have the passion to do it, although you you should be able to at least make a living, you know, um, doing mm -hmm. what you do after you're working so hard uh, doing it. And also because if you're going to get experience making films, You've got to put the time in, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So you you were we were talking about the camera app, the Blackmagic camera app, and you said the stabilization is really not so great. Is there anything else that's um, we should tell them? You know, work on this other thing too. Uh, well, n I think no. That's that is the focus. I that's I have it? Uh, um, no no I have some very very important as uh, important tools for me in applications like focus picking mm -hmm. we have it here um, stabilization it's um, it's not good but it's it's okay okay it's it's think thanks black magic that they add it uh, in, in, in that way okay I, I can live with it um, that's the some kind of frames uh, 
focus assistant like uh i don't have oh i can't as far as i remember i can't control my bitrate uh if i'm using the pro movie recorder or filmic pro or moment camera i can just set my bitrate like 100 mbps or 50 mbps but here it's i can't find the settings for it i think that there is no it settings for it just says how the uh, the pro res 4k yeah. 60 or something like that but not the bitrate yeah, exactly. It's just ProRes. But ProRes in iPhones, I have a problem with it. Because the problem is, um, the, uh, if you try to capture some ProRes footage with your phone, it, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a big files. It's very, very big That's files. That's why and the USB-C to... on the 15 is going to come in handy. Yeah, but in iPhone, just regular iPhone, it's very slow. It's like lighting, it's like USB 2.0. But if uh, in, in iPhone uh, Pro versions and Pro Max, it's, it's much faster. But you have to, as far as I know, you have to buy external yep. cable for it. But you can do this. But uh, on older phones like iPhone 13 and 14, you have a lightning and airdrop, and if you tr if you want to transfer that file on a computer, I actually, to be fair, I do have a flash drive that I can plug in to the um, to my iPhone 13, and it works. Yeah, and I used it. I bought it when I had the iPhone XR. It has the um, the the lightning uh, plug for it, so you plug it in where you charge mm -hmm. it, and it works. As I used it, I was. Uh, uh, I tested it on um, the the Martin Luther King parade one year. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I was filming the parade and I was saving it directly into that drive, into that external drive. And it worked. Because hmm. I'm suffering a lot with this airdrop. It's too slow. The lightning is too slow. I use the um, like clouds. Um, you know, I upload it to Google Cloud or Yandex Cloud, whatever. And then I to me, download it to my... The uploading <laughs> to the cloud hurts because for me, that's like, uh, it depends on, you know, coverage, cell phone coverage, if you're out somewhere. If you're at home or have Wi-Fi, it works okay. But if you're out, you know, depending on where you are and you don't have good cell phone co coverage, then, mm. you know, it just takes forever. And we, uh, you know, I... I capture the footage with my phone but i edited it on my computer and we always argued with maxim about this he his position was just like if you're a mobile filmmaker filmmaker <laughs> you have to do everything in a, in your phone like <laughs> oh, no. uh, you know capture edit <laughs> uh, write a script yeah i i i agree but i mm, no I, I there's the two there's two there's some people i go through this all the time I and mean, they know because i'm very passionate about this they think that um um, I forgot what the word is for this, but it's like, you're all this then. And it's like, you know, when people would contact me for in 2012 or something, uh, Arthur, way back then when you were mm -hmm. a baby, um, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, they would ask me, they would say, um, what, uh, do I have to capture the audio on the phone? Do I have to, um, do I have to edit this somehow on the phone? How do I, and I would say, you can use a crane, you can use a tripod, you can use external audio. The only thing that you must replace with the regular camera is the camera by using the phone camera. Everything else, you can use whatever you need. And the reason I was saying that, and I continue to say that, is because I was talking uh, when i first started this i thought hollywood filmmakers no i'm just kidding but independent Oof. professional filmmakers would humor me and try it on there's now now i know and i realize if you're listening to me and you're one of them you i understand where you were coming from <laughs> but at <laughs> the time it my vision was in the future it wasn't so solid in the present. And at the time, I didn't understand why they, they weren't going to try that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it was like, 
I'm thinking of the future and I'm reaching out to actual professional filmmakers to start trying this so that you can inspire people who had never filmed anything in their lives by showing them, right, that you could film it on a phone. Mm. And so I knew that they had their own audio gear, that they had, you know, their three, four thousand dollar tripods, that they had a crane, that they had all these all the gear already but if they could just use the phone instead of the regular camera that they could inspire everybody so i am not (laughs) maxim i do it's not that whether i agree or not it's some people are you know very much like that and others are like me that are saying nah just replace the camera everything else is fine you know, however you need to, whatever you need to do to get the job done, basically, right? Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm, 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 uh, I'm used to work on a laptop because I, my, my uh, I started my career in a video on a television, and I always make my edits on a computer, yeah. in a Premiere Pro, and then on DaVinci Resolve and a Final Cut, of course, uh, and then I, you know, um, step in in the mobile filmmaking territory. And I just that I have all all my habits um, from my past, and it's much easier to me to uh, work on a computer. But I I understand that if we talk about the competition, but you know what um, is is that fair that if I enter some competition and I use all this, I use my computer or or uh, and uh, DaVinci Resolve for example, and some guy that you know, uh, take place in that competition too. I have a solution. You use, yeah. I have a solution. So we do have a special category. It's called the ultimate mobile category. Everything is done on a phone. Oh. The music composing, the, the editing is done on the phone. Obviously, you film it on the phone, but everything is done on the phone. So then it's fair if you're in that competition right in that well in that Mm -hmm. category because if you get selected from that category you're only you're only really competing from those to go on to get the first second or third prize that's a good idea i think that's cool because um maybe you know uh, uh, yeah i i know a lot of people that thinks that like maxim he, he thinks that you have to do everything in the phone so yeah why not if you want to do everything in the phone i i i think that uh, you can use any you know devices like uh, on my online classes there is a final work at the end uh, my students have to do the final work um when just you know all classes is over and they always oh, ask me I see about what you the final project Final project, yeah. yeah, and and they ask me like, hey, um, like he have a good he, he uh, other student he have a good gear. I don't have it. Uh, is it's it, that's not fair. And I always answer like, it doesn't matter what gear you use and what gear you have. I want you to tell a story, and I put my attention on this aspect, uh, on your story, not of your picture quality, resolution, and all that. Right. But the uh, this ultimate. How you call it? Ultimate mobile. So you, it's a category, and people submit to it. And the way the festival works is, everybody in each category has a winner, and those people that win in that category, they go on to to compete with each other for the ultimate award. So I think we have like a ten or eleven categories or something. So those are the ones that get. Um, to get to compete for the final awards. So if you made an awesome film, the best of the best from each category are the ones that actually make it, right? And so then they compete with each other, regardless of what they made it in, but those are the top-notch films. So I think it's kind of cool when you have somebody that has made, that has won, right? That the judges say, wow, this is the top one, the highest ratings and the results come in and it's someone who filmed everything on their phone or someone who never made a movie in their entire life, you know, Mm -hmm. but made a great, you know, uh, like we also have a music category and you have 
you know, a top notch music video, right? Like mm-hmm. your film, uh, your film style would be great for making music videos. I think with the way that you shoot your footage and everything, all those things competing with each other for the end, because in the end, everybody used not a mobile device like iPods and GoPros and things like that. They everybody used a smartphone camera, regardless of the brand. Mm. And then what the competition really is with the judges, it's not about what they used. It's like you said, it's the story. Yeah. And that's that's how you win the category, but that's also how you win the ultimate. And see what that does is it creates kind of a little bit of a filter so that everybody has a fair equal arena to compete in. Maybe in future, uh, uh, you know, you, you have to do like um, category AI generated footage. <laughs> <laughs> not, not to compete in the final one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I think once you know, if we had enough um, enough time, enough um, uh, money, right? Quite honestly, to screen mm. every one of them and and prices, you know, to give out prices for each one and things like that, you know, it would be great. But I still keep, you know, um, there was a film festival in Macedonia uh, around this started around the same time that I did. And Mm -hmm. um, they said, you know, uh, Vesna, uh, she she and I would have a long discussions about why I was focused on only mobile phones instead of. I, I mean, there were iPods at the time and GoPros and other things. And I would say, because my vision says this is the one device that everybody has. So if everybody competes with this one device, it's very fair, you know? Yeah. And I want them to be different brands because I want the brands to compete with each other, making better cameras on each phone, which they are. <laughs> <laughs> They're constantly competing with each other uh, to make to say our brand has the best phone. You know, now that iPhone 15 came out, you know, Sony is the one that came out with the first 4K camera on a phone. Yeah, I used I used uh, Asus phone, Asus Zen Phone 7 Pro uh, for a while, and the camera in this phone was fantastic. I uh, I have a two phones back one then. One plus. It was, uh, also had a really good camera. Yeah, a lot of a lot, a lot of Android phones have a good good, good cameras, and uh, a lot of people think that oh, I have to buy iPhone to get a great you know footage quality. But no, you can use even cheap phones today have a great picture quality. Yeah, they have a problems with a stable picture. Maybe um, it's not as good as a picture on iPhone or some Samsung. You know, just the latest something, very expensive models, but it's still good. It's still okay to create some stories. So you can use anything um, with everything. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's really about the apps. You know, the compat- compatibility with other things that you use. Like for example, you know, you were talking about editing on your laptop, and um, like for for example, let's just say that someone can't handle Da Vinci which is good for PCs and for Apple, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say somebody can't handle that. Uh, So you know where else you can get a free app on your your computer? iMovie, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you use uh, an iPhone and you have a Mac, then you have some compatibility. You can airdrop your footage into your map. And then you can also use GarageBand to create some music for yourself so you don't have to go shopping around and this is one way to get started with making short films but that doesn't mean that you can't make a feature film using iMovie and you know GarageBand and uh you know an Android phone or whatever it's all up to how much time and effort and how much passion you have because the passion is what gives you the energy to put that time and effort into creating your film. And if you have a great story, that's going to inspire you 
to do yeah. it. There's just one technical problem with the Android is there um, on iPhone you have a garage band, it's free. Mm -hmm. uh, you have an iMovie, it's free. You have a Black Magic now, it's free too. So you have a, a lot of you know tools to work with. On Android, there is not um, there is not so many applications, especially free applications that you can use. Um, it's VN, it's uh, um, free editing software. It's okay. Yeah. But speaking about the camera apps, there is just open camera, but it's not stable as you just you know, don't others. have as much of a choice. Yeah, you don't have. Yeah, exactly, exactly. On iPhone, you have a much, much bigger choice to to choose, you know, from applications. Yeah. So, what do you think, Arthur? Well, should we? Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share? Now, we're going to put the links for everything that we talked about, and then more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh we're going to put the links for to follow Arthur on Facebook and his websites uh also one side is his website. One, yeah, one side .ru. That's Roo, the Russia. That's the, yeah, yeah, that's the website of our video production and the uh, book? pocket film. It's on Russian. I, I, I uh, think. Whatever. You know what? I'm still going to put it in there. If somebody wants to buy a, a book made in Russian, you know, uh, that would be great. Because you have five books now uh, coming up there, right? It's, it's four right now. And I write a fifth book right now. Okay. It's in progress. So that's okay. They can go there later, right? Yeah, they can yeah. go there later and 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 read these books and support you and share them with other people and also bring up those numbers for you on Amazon, and then also uh, you make music, so they can yes. go and uh, check out your music as well. Yeah, I, I I make music with a bad English and a lot of grammar mistakes. So if you want to <laughs> listen to that, you can find it on Spotify <laughs> very easily. I, I think uh, you're very, very talented. I love the music that you make. Thank I love you. I love your um and you're also, you know, you teach by doing, but you also give some insights that are very unique and very beneficial. Um to the your students right uh mm. in your in your school and you've been doing this for a long time and it's very inspiring um you know when you follow arthur on social media by the way i could tell you he's on threads too oh, yeah. <laughs> um that you'll see his work and it's really pretty awesome. And if you think you can't translate um, his stuff, I've already talked to Arthur. He's going to make more videos in English. Right, Arthur? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm getting you to admit it here in public. <laughs> Give you that push. Because <laughs> uh, I think your English is fine and I'm sure all of our listeners are going to agree with that. And, um, and let me see. The name of the school is called pocketfilm.ru yeah so, exactly so uh go there as well and um and maybe who knows maybe they'll end up taking your courses i uh, I, I have a lot of you know requests for english uh cars, courses I, I i i want i i have to do this one day and it's just you know i just maybe i'm lazy for it but i i know i have to so um, if you haven't tried this app yet, I mean Blackmagic Camera, you just you, you, you have to to try it up. It's a great application, and I hope uh, a lot of people, you know, thinks that oh, it's free now, but maybe in features it's, it's gonna be pay, uh, you know you have to pay for it. But I think no, it's just Blackmagic policy. Uh, DaVinci Resolve is still free for a, a long years. It's just free, free, free. They always update it, new versions, and all of all of these versions have a free version. So I think, no, that's that's just a company policy. And also, again, it's 37 megabytes. So it's not going to take that much out of your phone uh, the storage to put that in there. I think that's when I, I saw that uh, and I was like, well, only 37 megabytes. That's pretty awesome. Anything else? Well, I have to say thanks to our to, to your listeners. And um, as the last time, I want to say it in Russian, too, like, 
Спасибо большое, что слушали. Мне было очень приятно присоединиться к этому подкасту. Спасибо. Спасибо. Okay, yes. well, to Arthur's friends and family, спасибо. <laughs> thank you. Да. <laughs> да. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Say goodbye to our listeners in English. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thank you again, and I hope you will inspire and you don't stop create something good. That's the, I think that's our, one of the reasons why we live in. We have to do what we like and create something. We burn uh, many years ago and we, some, someday we will die. But before that, we have to create something, to give something to this world, to left something behind, like, uh, like legacy. Yeah, so I just wish you can create something good that you can proud of and I try to do some more stuff in the future and I, I believe I can do much more good videos, music, tracks and books to inspire somebody else. Thank you.